Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also rise briefly to offer my condolences and deepest sympathy in this August House to the wife and the children and the family of Sir Eric Burton, the late Sir Eric Burton, and also to offer my sincerest sympathies to the people of Barbuda, Mr. Speaker, and also on behalf of myself, my family, and the people of St. Peter, who I still represent, Mr. Speaker, and will always represent. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Sir Eric Burton enjoyed a very close relationship with my family, the late Patrick Michael, and more so, in particular, my late uncle, Morris J. Michael. They were extremely close friends over the years, despite different political views, and that he was on the Barbuda People Movement and my family were Labour Party. They enjoyed a very friendly and close and mutually respectful relationship. Mr. Speaker, my earliest memory of Sir Eric Burton, I did not have the opportunity, of course, to serve with him in this Honorable House, like Sir Maldwin Joseph and Sir Robin Yearwood, or the Honorable Attorney General, but I knew him at a very tender age, since I think I was 12 years old, and my fondest memory of him, sir, was when Antigua and Barbuda attained political independence with Great Britain in 1981. Mr. Speaker, some of us in this House would like to rewrite history, Mr. Speaker, but that must never happen. So let me educate, or let me try to offer some elucidation for the son-in-law and the Honourable Member for Barbuda on Sir Eric Burton in terms of what the Honourable Member for St. Mary's North said about Sir Eric Burton being supportive of a unitary state of Antigua and Barbuda. I remember when Sir Vere Cornwall Bird asked each prominent businessman in the country or business entity to sponsor something meaningful for the independence, and uh, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth was unable to come for our political independence, and she dispatched her sister, Princess Margaret, to come, and my father agreed to have the official state banquet at my residence at Dwyer, where Princess Margaret was. I have all the pictures, and I remember I was 12 years old or so. Sir Eric Burton was there as the leader of the opposition. Sir Eric Burton, Ruben Harris, Lester Bird, Sir Lester Bird, Sir Wilford Jacobs, as his then governor general, the first governor general of Antigua and Barbuda. The entire cabinet, I recall, could not be invited because we, they had to limit the numbers. But Sir Eric Burton was there. And Sir Eric Burton, Mr. Speaker, I did not hear him myself, but I recall Sir Lester Bird saying, and Hugh Marshall Jr., Hugh Marshall Sr., and Mr. John Eugene St. Louis, that Sir Eric Burton gave his commitment the severe call were bird then at that official state banquet that despite and albeit his previous positions with the member for Barbuda said this morning that he was never for a unitary state, he gave his commitment at that official state independence banquet that he was supportive and he's committed to the unitary state of Antigua and Barbuda. And that is a historical fact. I don't think three men, Sir Lester Bird, Johnny St. Louis, and Hugh Marshall Sr., would invent such a lie. And they're all alive. Mr. Speaker, my other memories of Sir Eric Burton was later in life, when I traveled many times to Barbuda, many times with our honorable, distinguished Prime Minister. Yes. When we went over to Barbuda, each time we went to, to Barbuda, every time, Mr. Speaker, Sir Eric Burton opened up his home to the Prime Minister, myself, the General Secretary of the Labour Party, Mary Clearhurst, the Chairman of the Party when he also came, the Honourable Member for St. Paul, and he was extremely receptive, and not only receptive and a great host, 
in terms of preparing meals for us and giving us lovely barbecue and lobster and conks to eat. He also gave our prime minister, who was not prime minister then, political advice. And Mr. Speaker, he would also tell us which Barbudans and the delegation that he think would vote because we were challenging for the leadership of the Labour Party. And we were going over to Barbuda several times, Mr. Speaker, to meet the canvas. And we also campaigned later on for the council election. Mr. Speaker, we also campaigned vigorously for the council elections, I don't remember the exact year, when we won, I think, five seats on the council. Pardon me? 2013. 2013, just before the 2014 election. And I may venture to say, and I stand corrected, Mr. Speaker, because I really do not know, but it's my firm belief that the late Sir Eric Burton, because of his respect and admiration for Gaston Brown as a young leader, and he believed in what he was doing. I think he voted for the Labour Party, not just in the 2018 election, but I think he voted for the Labour Party in the 2014 elections. I really believe that. And from the discourses and the discussions that he had with us, he was firmly in our corner, even against his own son-in-law, Mr. Speaker. But he was a great man from what I knew of him, I have great respect, admiration for the love that he showed and displayed at all times for the people of Barbuda and the respect that he showed for the unitary state of Antigua and Barbuda, Mr. Speaker. At all times, he showed his firm and unswerving support and commitment to the unitary state of Antigua and Barbuda. He has made a tremendous contribution for the development of Barbuda in the tourism sectors and the other sectors in Barbuda, when he represented the people of Barbuda, he was a distinguished, honorable gentleman in this House of Representatives. And Mr. Speaker, once again, I don't want to be too long. That's what I've known. I do not know him as well as the other more elderly gentlemen in this parliament, but I offer my sincere and deeper sympathies to the wife children, family, and the people of Barbuda, and also to the son-in-law of Sir Eric Burton, the Honourable Member for Barbuda. Thank you, sir.